Hey, this is Rayburn coming to you live from the Road Famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Hitch Clam. Fuck yes. Welcome, everybody. You're here at the number one live podcast in the world. Make some fucking noise. The great Brian Redband is here. Hi. Ryan J. Ebelt is here drawing tonight's episode live while you all sit there doing less than nothing, enjoying yourselves. He's hard at work drawing tonight's episode. Every print of every show that we've ever done, including all the road shows, are available at ryanjebelt.com. Get your Kill Tony prints, including Kill Tony the Book, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. How exciting. Coming off a big weekend in La Jolla. Five sold-out stand-up shows and two sold-out Kill Tonys. All in the bank. Easy breezy. One of the most beautiful comedy clubs in the world. The only other comedy store on the planet. Mitzi Shores. Baby girl. What a great place that is. La Jolla Comedy Store. Don Carlos Burritos. abso fucking lootly sir. I like that. Shut the fuck up now. Uh, the best burrito in the world. We ate five of them. I, I ate five of them over this past weekend. The California burrito, something I didn't know about until I moved out here. It's a steak burrito with everything in it and French fries. Holy shit. Uh, Ventura Kill Tony is this Thursday. Two of them. We added another show because they're selling out. They're one sold out. So get tickets for the late show if you're anywhere near Ventura. Comedians, if you're bored, come up to Ventura. Why not? Stand in the lobby there. Sign up. Get a chance to uh, get pulled out of a bucket there. And then we continue on. Two Kill Tonys, Tacoma, Washington, including two stand-up shows that I headline. You get to see some of your favorite uh, Kill Tony people, including Red Band, Jesse Johnson, and Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez on that one, while Jeremiah is out headlining. Skankfest South, March 27th to the 28th. Kill Tony, Miami, April the 3rd, with a stand-up show on the 4th. Either that or the stand-ups on the 4th and the Kill Tonys on the 3rd. I'm a little bit confused. Check the website for that one. Boston Kill Tony, April 9th with stand-up the 10th and 11th. That's a huge weekend in Boston. Just added another show to that Kill Tony, which sold out very quickly. And uh, Moon Tower. It's official. We are doing Moon Tower. It is on the uh, the Wednesday and Thursday of the Moon Tower week, uh, which is on the 22nd and 23rd. I am out on the 24th and 25th opening for a couple young comedians named Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan combining their powers. Myself, Donnell Rawlings, Rogan, and Chappelle. Just a couple young bucks trying to make it in this world. Uh, Shout out to Caveman Coffee keeping us energized. Just a reminder, there's no show here on April 20th. There will be no Kill Tony on 420. Shocking, shocking news. But we already had our 420 episode uh, this year. We celebrated episode 420 just a month ago or so. Shout out to Vito's Pizza. Unbelievable pizza right down the street here on La Cienega. They keep us stuffed. It's delicious. I I would recommend trying the Kill Tony Spicy Roni. It's a spicy pepperoni pizza with the words. Little tiny pepperonis. Little tiny pepperonis based off of the actual size of my nipples. Kill and, Tony, and spicy roni. No one wants those red band size pepperoni. Oh, yeah, you do. You, know you guys mean? like that Canadian bacon. Come on. All right, red band. Uh, a lot of stuff happening in the news. Uh, people are in a scurry right now, buying up toilet paper and things like that. My advice is to break up with your toilet paper. Treat your butt right with tushy. Wiping your butt with dry toilet paper does not remove all the shit. If you got poop on any other part of your body, would you just wipe it off with dry paper? No. Water cleans better than dry paper, my friends. Thankfully, now there's a sleek bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called Tushy, and it's the best thing you can do for your butt. Tushy sprays directly to your ass and removes the poop completely, so you aren't sitting on bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids, yeast infections... UTIs, itchy assholes, and skid marks. Skid marks, wow. Bidets are common in the rest of the world. You know, a bidet will save you so much money on toilet paper. And I don't know about you, but the grocery store by my house is out of toilet paper. That's a real thing that's going on everywhere. I have a bidet. I've had it for a long time. It, it attaches to your water. That's the same water that you use to brush your teeth. It's clean water, guys. And it's really easy to do. It took me like five minutes or less to put it on my own toilet. It, uh, wet wipes are worse for your toilet than ever. Uh, they're terrible for the environment and they cause anal fissures you don't want any anal fissuring that's true you don't and you don't have to worry about clogging your toilets with toilet paper or uh, butt wipes you just spray it 
Nice, fresh, so clean. I have it. It's amazing. Yeah. I, in fact, I installed it myself easy. easily. Yeah. It was incredible. I had no idea that it's that easy to take off the toilet seat and everything like Simple. that. You just two little snaps with the buttons, a couple screws. I was, I felt like a real man afterwards. Yeah. And it's like, only seventy nine dollars. Did something. Guys. I, it's seventy nine bucks. It's only seventy nine dollars. Unbelievable. Think about that. You can live the life of a luxurious rich person. For only $79, you could spray your fucking open micer asshole. <laughs> Go to hellotushy.com slash kill Tony and get 10% off your order. We implore you now while places are running out of toilet paper. Go to hellotushy.com slash kill Tony and get 10% off of your order. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. Absolutely. How exciting. You guys ready to start this episode? That's it. It's that easy. One little bidet ad. Keep your ad clean with Hello Tushy. Uh, we have two, as with always, we have two of the funniest people in the world here tonight. Uh, how exciting is that? We always have the best guests. This week's no different. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Make some noise for him, everybody. It's Matt Bronger and Chrissy Mayer. Wow. Here we go. Welcome. The great Chrissy Mayer, all the way from New York, Matt Bronger. One of our favorite people on the planet. Many times he's been on the show. Boston, Vancouver, Los Angeles, and he's back. Matt Bronger has a brand new album out right now, available everywhere, called Please Hold Me. I implore you to check it out. Matt Bronger, welcome back. Thanks for having me, man. It's an awesome honor to be back on the pirate ship. How are you, folks? Everybody good? That's right. Chaos shall ensue, as it always did. The great Christy Mayer is here, the host of Wet Spot on Compound Media. She's on a tour right now. ChrissyMayer.com for tickets. So it kicks off again on March 20th, White Plains Comedy Club in White Plains, New York. Welcome, Chrissy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. First time on Kill Tony for Chrissy Mayer, fresh off of International Women's Day. So she's here. There you go. There's a goat. For some reason. For the first time of being oh, on the, the show. Oh, the first time being on the show. That makes sense. All right. That's, a, that's what happens when a comedian uh, does, has their first ever stand-up set. But there you go. A little uh, sprung it on me there. A little bit of a goat to kick things off. Um, so welcome to the show, Chrissy. Um, I have to warn you, there is a band on this show. Do you guys know about the band at all? <laughs> Pretty mellow audience tonight. You guys excited to be here at all? All right. Everybody, the band commits to being different characters every single week. We never know what they're going to be. They have a separate uh, dressing room than we do in the back there, and they've been hard at work getting ready. It's the entire band. It's the best damn band in the land. Uh, Last night, they were FedEx drivers and um, a bachelorette party. Um, So maybe it's uh, new characters. Maybe it's the return of characters that we've seen before. Let's all find out what they are tonight. I present to you the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, Chroma Critz, and Jesse Jetski Johnson. Whoa! Wow! My mind is completely blown. I love new characters, and this is unbelievable. They are very clearly all famous television chefs, everybody. Wow. Holy moly. Lead chef, uh, remind me again of what... I'm Chef Gordon Ramsay. Who the fuck are you? (laughs) (laughs) Gordon Ramsay, thank you so much. Wow, look at this. The names are written down for me. Thank you, Chef. Like a yes, little... Chef. <laughs> and, uh, of course, next to you, this is clearly the great, the powerful Paula Dean. Welcome, Paula. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. I just want to clear the air. I did uh, say the N-word, but... <laughs> It was while I was being held at gunpoint, and that man was just acting like a real N-word. Oh, my goodness, Paula Dean. Getting the party started quickly here. I noticed that you, uh, I noticed that you waited a week until after Donnell Rawlings was here as a guest. to. Uh... That's right. 
And uh, next to you, of course, the great Guy Fieri is here. Chroma Chris. <laughs> Guy Fieri, clearly pregnant with triplets. Uh, hi, Guy. Hey, I got my ticket to Flavortown tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, why are you doing that with your tongue? Whoa. Oh, my God. All right, Guy. All right, Guy. Jesus. <laughs> is that what Flavortown has meant all along? <laughs> Pussy? Is that what it's meant? I think so, and then, and then clearly back here. Bam! <laughs> Bam! And then clearly back here from the hit show Cheers, we have Rhea Perlman, everybody. How exciting. <laughs> no, the great Emerald Lagasse is here, right? Yeah. Show some respect, Tony. Is this thing on? <laughs> Bam! Did you know that the road to Flavortown is paved in cocaine? Wow. No, I did not. Bam! Oh, wow. My goodness, Emeril. You know, we were just at uh, in Swansea at Venus de Milo where your uh, chef career actually started. Yeah, I know. Okie dokie. Uh, so we have uh, the guests, the band, which are professional chefs, Brian and his wacky soundboard, which brings me to this, the Bucket of Destiny, everybody. This is it. The backbone of the show. Bunch of people signed up for the chance to get 60 seconds uninterrupted on this stage and then get interviewed by me and my uh, wacky, as Matt Bronger calls it, I love it, the pirate ship of insanity here on Kill Tony. You know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. And then I talk to you for a few minutes, find out more about you and what makes you and your life interesting and different than everybody else that gets pulled up here on a regular basis. You guys ready to start this show, huh? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. This is, it feels janky in here. That whole second level has no energy. The, the half of this side over here feels off. Are you guys ready to start the number one live podcast in the Woo! fucking world? Jesus Christ, people. Enjoy yourselves. Get some shots. Go order some fucking tequila or something. Wake up. You need up a little up. seasoning. Bam! <laughs> All right, Emerald. My God. All right, here we go. I pulled a name out of the bucket. Your first comedian getting an uninterrupted 60 seconds tonight goes by the name of Michael Silver. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he is. One more time for Michael Silver, everybody. Anybody ever come home to just everybody screaming, you know? After a long day of work, all you want to do is go to sleep. But everybody is screaming. You know what I mean? They're like, ah, ah! And then you realize you don't live there? <laughs> Anyone ever call a suicide hotline? Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but excellent customer service, I gotta say. <laughs> Great A. I called him up, I was like, hey, is this a suicide hotline? She's like, yeah, hi, how are you? I'm like, well, not too good, I wanna die. <clears throat> I feel like a more reasonable response is something like, hey, is this a suicide hotline? She's like, yeah, don't do it! You know, something like that. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Been to the suicide ward three times. First time, I wanted to die. Other two times, I could not decide if I liked the place or not. You know what I mean? I wanted to have an accurate opinion. So when I was five years old, I got into a fight with this 10-year-old girl. I messed that up. Yesterday, I got into a fight with this 10-year-old girl. Okay, thanks, I'm Michael Silver. There it is, Michael Silver. I was listening to your set, like why would this guy wanna kill himself? And then I heard the rest of it and I figured out why. <laughs> Welcome, Michael. How are you? Bet you're back on the show. Yeah. I'm you happy yourself to be back. are a chef. Am I correct about that? Uh, no, fish filet. Oh, you sales. just fillet the fish. Get the, the fuck out of my kitchen. <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> chef Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> always mad for some reason. This is like having the real fucking Chef Gordon Ramsay here. Look at the eye contact. Just completely locked on the fish filet. <laughs> he wants you out of here. I think he's on coke and he thinks he's in his kitchen, like right now. <laughs> so, Michael, let's talk about it. How long have you been doing stand-up again? 
Uh, almost a year now. A year now. Wow. And uh, you, this is your third time on the show? Uh, fourth. Fourth. Mm. Uh-huh. And is this true, this whole suicide thing? Yeah, I've been to the suicide ward three times. Why is that? You have a... You have a Good. Chronic depression? Yeah. Bipolar? Uh, what did they diagnose? Don't mind him. Yeah, he's on code. Uh, a while ago, diagnosed major depression. Major depression. Yeah. Is it uh, ge- genetic? Your mom or your sisters or brothers have this Wait, as well? Does that mean you're in the military? <laughs> what, what do you mean by military. that, Emerald Lagasse? Major depression. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bam! You might have to... I wouldn't bam after that phrase, but <laughs> what do I know? Uh, so uh, it's hard for you. You going through it now, or is it something that you've gotten over? Or uh, you know, still every day it's a different day. But uh, just they have you on medicine? Regularly. No, no, no medicine. Just smoke they a just lot of keep weed. sending you to the suicide ward, and then they're like, "Get out of here, dude. You're Pretty good." Much, they're like, "Fuck off." Water I mean, and peanuts. You'll we're lucky fine. that you lack follow through. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Like, I can't commit to anything. <laughs> Where, where, where? I've tasted your tears, and they're too salty. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, what are these suicide wards like? Tell us about them. I don't know. Uh, they're a weird place. Like, cause uh, initially I went in, I was in for uh, first time I went, in, I was in for two weeks. Uh-huh. And that's cause like I was just in there. I was like, fuck, I don't want to do anything. Didn't want to go to any of the groups or anything like that. Right. So they keep you in there longer. Mm-hmm. And then also like I didn't want to take the medication because I'd never taken antidepressants before. Right. And they put me on an extremely high dosage. So I was like, fuck that. Right. Yeah. Cause why? Why were you like, fuck that? Well, because I've only I've heard a bunch of stories about people who go on antidepressants and they've never been on it. They become dependent on it, and then also it takes. I get it. No, Brody, get out of here! Don't do that. That is just <laughs> sadder than it is funny. Red band. Red band. <laughs> there you go. There it is. No, it uh, it takes two weeks for like your body to get used to the antidepressants. So I was like, basically. Oh, it's like anal. I feel like shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So you, you didn't take the antidepressants because you didn't want to feel like shit? Well, like, I already felt like shit, so right. I was like, I don't want to feel worse. But I ended up, like, to get out, I had to take them. So. It is an interesting dilemma. Yeah. Sometimes they make you feel worse. Sometimes they make you feel better. Oh, yeah, it uh, sucks. So you've gone, uh, you've gone raw dog since then. No medicine. Yeah, yeah. How's that going for you? It's not cooked well enough. <laughs> you know, each day is different. You know, I have, like, low points and high points. What are some natural remedies that you do to take care of your depression? Maybe there's uh, someone out there listening that suffers from this, and you can help uh, them right now. Basically, I smoke a lot of weed. Like, oh, okie dokie. Uh, have you ever tried, like, working out? I heard yeah, working out, that's, actually. Yeah, like, I'm constantly working out. Constantly. Ryan heard that working out. Yeah, I just heard <laughs> it. You didn't try it I don't believe it either. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, no, like constantly, basically. Like if I don't, like I just feel like weird. Like I'm right. Not what the type right of rhythm. working out do you do? Uh, today I squatted. So. Oh I really? Can yeah. you show us uh, what Turn type around. of squats that you did? Oh yeah, you know just. Ooh. Yeah. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> that form of shit. Yeah. yeah. What well, else, you, Michael? What else has been going on in life? You have a girlfriend or anything right now that you're uh, dragging yeah, no, uh, down with time. your sad energies? Yeah, uh, last time I was on, we broke up like that day, and we actually got back together like two weeks later. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, back to up. filleting her fish. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it's nice. What does she do for work? Uh, she works over at Flappers. Oh, boy. You might want to break up with her again. <laughs> this is the worst comedy hey. club. I shouldn't have said that shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. What does she do over at Flappers? Uh, she's a server. She's a server. Mm-hmm. And she's a comedian as well. So. You, have you, any of you chefs ever worked with this server? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nice cure for depression. It's a recipe. You take a stick of butter, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need, do I need to write it down? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Thank you, thank it's, you. Uh, in every cookbook of mine. <laughs> <laughs> the great Paula Dean is live in the flesh here. Michael, anything else crazy about your life happened since the last time uh, you were on the show? Anything else interesting? I just watched that show, Hunters. What's that show? It's a great show. About, Netflix? Uh, what is that? It's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's fantastic. It's uh-huh. fucking uh, about dudes who hunt, uh, Jewish people who hunt down Nazis. It's great. Uh oh. It's like everything you want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben, 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 Ben. Hey, man, know your audience. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, there is a new thing. Much like there are Joelberg chants when he makes a good joke. As of last night in La Jolla, there was the birth of a new tradition, which is. When Jet Ski Jesse Johnson makes a good joke, everybody in the audience is now supposed to rev their jet <laughs> skis <laughs> like that and go like this. Ben, 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 ben. <laughs> but you have to be louder than Red Band's sound effect, which is already drowning out all of the fun of the uh, <laughs> new tradition. Uh, so, uh, Michael, uh, you're watching Hunters, and you enjoy that 
Um, it's finished it. It's fantastic. 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 Were, who, were you rooting for the Nazis? Or? No, no, no. no, no. No, yeah. like, I have Jewish heritage, so I was just like, ah, you guys suck. Like, uh, I hated oh, Nazis okay. before. <laughs> Paula Dean, what do you think about Jewish people? Oh, I can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Michael Silver, congratulations. You got pulled out of the bucket three, four times in one year. That's a great average. Michael Silver, everybody. Anything can happen. That guy gets pulled out four times in one year. Some people tell me that they sign up for years and years and never get on this show. You just never know. God tends to give luck to people that suffer from chronic depression, though. <laughs> pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for your next comedian, Darius Bennett, everyone. Darius <laughs> Bennett. Here we go. <laughs> Here he comes. We know this oh. guy. Door guy. Yeah, he's great. Little darling, steer it up. Hey, One more time for up? Darius Bennett, everybody. What up? Uh, <clears throat> I want to get married because uh, I believe in love. I just don't believe uh, in how people get married nowadays. People get married to the people they love, and um, that shit's stupid. I think it is. Because you got to get along with the person you, that, you, that you're with. Like, I, I need to like my wife way more than I like these hoes right now. I like them. I really like them. Because like is more important. When you like somebody, you're more willing to apologize for something you did wrong. Like, say I'm out in public with, with some lady I like, and I mistakenly knock a drink over, I'm gonna go, oh, sh I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me buy you another one. But if I love her, I'm gonna go, well, why the fuck would you put your drink right there? <laughs> huh? You see me, I, I, I can't take you nowhere, goddamn. It's always tough love, it's never tough like. I was almost married once. The closest I was being married was, uh, I, was I was fucking this lady who was married. <laughs> yeah. Darius Bennett. Awesome set. You've been on the show a few times. Yes, this you're, is my third time. I third think. Third time, and now you're a door guy. Yeah. And I would, uh, I would say that without a doubt, that's the best set you've ever had on this show. I, I would, I would agree. Yes. Clearly showing yeah. that the longer you do it, the harder you work, the better you get. Especially when you're in a system like the Comedy Store Door Guy system, where greats like David Letterman, Jim Carrey, Tony Hinchcliffe, a lot of the best comedians in the world have come out of uh, being a door guy there. Let's check in with the great chef Gordon Ramsay. That set was very well done. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Absolutely, Darius. I absolutely fucking love it. So uh, what's your love life like now? I'm, uh, I'm single. Single as a dollar bill, bro. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're, saying it, you're saying it like you sat a couple ladies tonight that uh, you're interested in. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I'm, I'm available. It is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm available. available. Well, I feel like Darius is writing music as he's writing <laughs> jokes. You're a smooth motherfucker, about Darius. To slide off this seat. Whew. Good lord. Yeah. I, can, uh, I, can I say one thing? Absolutely. Tony? Uh, the, Darius prioritized himself as soon as he got on stage. Like not to get technical, but you got up and was just like, "Look, I have something you might want to hear." No, you're going to hear it. It's fantastic. And everyone leaned in, and you pop, 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 like you just killed it. And Michael was great, but he didn't prioritize a thing. Like. He kind of just went and, went, and he had, I thought, some funny ideas, but he kind of just was like, ah, oh, maybe you like this. It doesn't matter what your mental stage is or whatever, like your emotional state. You got to act, be like Darius, everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all I'm going to say. I know it's, it's not funny, true. but like. You have, to, you have to command the audience's attention. That's why every time I hit the stage, no matter how big the show or where the set is or who went on before me, I always say that I'm one of the top young rising comedians <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Makes people pay attention. Oh, I don't think he is, so I'm going to pay attention. Oh, maybe he is, so I'm going to pay attention. See? Yeah. I appreciate that yep. you're a black comic that doesn't have a nickname. Like, you could very easily call yourself Darius the Hilarious, and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of love it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's oh. funny. Oh. That's funny. Oh, shit, you just changed it. Next week, he's going to be Darius the Hilarious. No, I would never. Ju just never change it to Hilarious. Face. Just no. cut out the middle nickname. Yeah. It's the new kings of comedy yeah, that's funny. with Darius the Hilarious. I got a bunch of emails. One of my emails is Hilarious Darius. But I didn't name myself that shit. One of my old uh, teachers from high school, he would call me that. 
Wow. Like, all right, I'll, I'll name that as one of my emails. You have a bunch of emails? Yeah. Darius the Various over here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That, that, I, that one is the, the least professional one. I give that to did. people. I'm like, all right, check my email out. Send me some, whatever you got to send me. And then there's the professional one that I sent to executives. And shit. You're such a professional. In fact, you're so professional, you kept your earpiece in during the entire oh, yeah. set. It's incredible. <laughs> Actually, yeah, can no, you get my car, Darius? Call. No offense. Can you grab that? No, I don't drive. I don't have a license. You fucking imagine. Now, I'm pretty sure there's someone up here that everyone wants to hear from. Let's check in with the great Paula Dean over here. Oh, uh, shit. So it's a time for healing. So professional. I would hire you as a doorman at my own home. <laughs> yeah, damn. <laughs> All right. Okay. Or a houseman or a field man. Uh-oh, bam. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Emerald. You're really playing with fire back there. Wow, so Darius, what else has been going on in life? You're a door guy here now. We knew you back when you were just over there mixed in in the dark blob of obscure people. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, amongst the uh, comrades over there. I bartend sometimes and uh, just... Where do you bartend at? It's, the, uh, it's a company that I work for. They do like a freelance bartending. So That's different. so cool that you make drinks for people. You're following in two ways in Bill Cosby's footsteps. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nah, nah. Everything I do is uh, consensual, you know. Uh-huh. I don't even throw my shot out there. A lot of, uh-huh. a lot of birds I let fly free. Paul I've been saying Bill Cosby's a rapist for years. <laughs> 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 and no one believed me. Darius, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you have so much stuff in your pockets, hopefully. Either yeah, that or the stereotypes are true. I got a, uh, uh, what I got in my pockets? I got He's a wine key. got four or five dicks. Wow, yeah, wine look key at in that. My you got a wine key over there? Yeah, I got an orange in my pocket. Why do you? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy doing magic shit. now. Uh, yeah. Take something. Take out a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I ain't made it yet, so I, I got a tap card. I catch the bus. Oh, here. you yeah. ride the bus with an orange yeah. in your pocket? The bus, the train. Yeah, apparently that shit is scaring people, but you got to have that vitamin C You got chapstick? Yeah, I got a couple of little chapstick. Wow, you know? damn. How you, is that, is that just, uh, does it hat. just take one... Uh, one use for you with chapstick, uh, with uh, lips like I that? Don't, I don't get your joke. What are you saying? It's because black people have big lips. Oh, okay. You Maybe specific. I got another Whoa, one there is a second one. Yeah. There's a second chapstick. Oh, I got, oh, shit. They all held back when I made that joke, but he pulls yeah. out a second chapstick and you applaud. I helped you. I threw you out of you. you. I feel like that there. was planned out between oh, the two of you. No, it was for each lip. Uh, uh. I wish it was. And then when he then when he runs out of chapsticks, he just unpeels the orange and rubs it on his lips. That's Hello. funny. Okay. All right. That's kind of what people do in jail a little bit. They use this as a fucking lip. Nip. Why the wine opener, though? I told you it's I'm a, a bartender. bartender. Oh, bartender. You don't listen. <laughs> well, you're not bartending right now. It seems like a pretty weird thing to have in your pocket. I thought it was for the subway. You know, subway wine. Just hang yeah. out. Well, you pop open beers with it. You know, wine and yep. all that shit. And then you catch the bus late at night. Might be some crazy. You Goddamn right. right. There's always a knife on the bottom part, right? Uh, the knife is not long enough, but this right here is good. Enough oh, yeah, there it is. You Absolutely. You could use it for breaking into cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know Paula. what? People use, people use screwdrivers for that, you know? Oh, wow. Anybody oh. walking around with a screwdriver, get a Phillips just in case you use it for protection. Don't use a flathead. You I wasn't going to ask this, but now I'm going to. They're going to think that you're breaking into cars and shit. Darius, what's the craziest crime you've ever committed? Ooh, fuck. Since we're talking about crime, not because you're black. The craziest? Probably yeah. drinking and driving, I guess. Oh, okay. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> fun. Drinking and driving yeah. must have been the worst, especially since you ride a bus. Uh, <laughs> that is a bad crime when you get on the bus and kick the bus driver out and start yeah. driving the number two down Sunset. At yeah. No, this was back at home, man. This was years ago, though. Where's home again? Michigan? Detroit, Michigan. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Detroit, What Michigan. up, though? 313, God baby. Damn. What's happening? 313. Well, I don't think no. anybody has a landline in Michigan anymore. No, not really. <laughs> right. Cell phones only. That's fun. Mm-hmm. How often do you go back, visit family? Uh, you know, I was going back uh, twice a month, maybe about a year ago, but now I haven't been back that often. I've been back on the grind. Chef Gordon Ramsay. What's your favorite dish that your mother prepares? Good question. Oh, man. Her brownies are probably the best. Wow. Are yeah. they brownies or are they blackies? What are we talking Ooh, about here? Yeah. All right. I mean, come on. You so rarely get to make a black person brownie joke. I, I took a chance there. I could have said right. you know, dark, dark chocolate. That would have yeah. been easier. You, for miss, this. you miss every shot you don't take, but you know. God damn right. 
And no one knows that better than someone who plays professional basketball like yourself. <laughs> another. Yeah. Now, I, now I'm being racist. That's okay. That's a hockey <laughs> quote, man. <laughs> I've seen your sets. I've seen. I've seen you do stand up a lot, and you're funny. So the oh. shit that you don't say that, that that's funny. I, I understand you got it in the, in the repertoire. Thank you, so, Darius. Yeah. Thank you. Know? you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Darius, a great set, man. Thank, Thank you so much. He's working hard here, getting paid to do comedy on Kiltoni. Darius Bennett. Sir Dario Bennett on Twitter, social media. The system works. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get one of our regulars up here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, last night in La Jolla, we had two shows. David, is he ready? Uh, last night in La Jolla, we had two shows, and uh, David Lucas and Michael Lair were able to make it down there, uh, both with both of their conditions. However, this guy wasn't for some reason. Um, he wasn't able to get a ride, according to him. Even though he has a car. Right. Uh, so here we are. We're going to find out all about it after we see his set. Very polarizing figure, but uh, he's been really killing it lately. Make some noise for the great William Montgomery, everybody. Oh! <laughs> Guys, make some fucking noise for William Montgomery. I've, uh, I've actually had a uh, really hard week this past week. I was uh, just rejected from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids on Ice. Uh, I've started smoking a, a new type of marijuana. It's called permanent unemployment. If cocaine were an astrological sign, it would be, where's the fucking cocaine? <laughs> People always talk about how they miss Rick Moranis, that they wish uh, he was in more movies. And it's like, yeah, maybe you forgot he shrunk his fucking kids and didn't go to jail. No, but seriously, Tony, I wasn't able to make it because I, I have the coronavirus. <laughs> I was given this hazmat suit from the nice people at Walgreens. There you go. William Montgomery, everybody. That's the hazmat suit that they gave you? It is. Yeah, yesterday I couldn't make it to La Jolla. I was uh, not only uh, diagnosed with coronavirus, but also mesothelioma. Oh. Wow. Oh. And they, they gave you a beekeepers? <laughs> with no gloves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just fully exposed. That net supposed to keep everything safe? Yeah, they gave me this. Um, Where I was actually, I was patient zero in the Pier 1 Imports in Calabasas. I don't know if y'all have read about that. That was me. I was coughing all over everything. Y'all don't go in the bathroom. I was coughing all over the sink. You have such an interesting method to your madness. Uh, sometimes you'll come out guns a-blazing with a reference that I haven't heard in decades. Uh, during 60 seconds of comedy uh, during this, you referenced Honey, I Shrunk the Kids twice. <laughs> Two different, completely different <laughs> jokes with a different joke in between them. Uh, did something happen this week where perhaps you saw that movie or were reminded of it? Is that what you did while we were doing shows in La Jolla without you? Yeah, no, last night I actually watched the movie My Girl, and when Macaulay Culkin got killed by bees, it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Hence the suit. So I got this suit at the Pier 1 Imports in Calabasas. Um, I, it just killed me. Macaulay and that girl he was with when he died, I started crying last night. Horrible nightmare. I'm actually burning up. I've been wearing this all fucking day. My face is incredibly hot right now. Chrissy Mayer, uh, this is a, a fellow ginger of yeah. yours. Um, yeah. It looks more like, honey, I shrunk the recessive genes. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to try that again? <laughs> oh, William. Okay. What the fuck that was that? William, do me like be that, nice. ginger brother. You're going to do me like that? <laughs> be nice, William. Be nice. Here, let me, let me help you tag that joke. I, uh, I obviously got the recessive gene. Interesting thing is both of my parents are black. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
I knew I didn't <laughs> like this guy. You do like him, Paula? No, I knew I did not. What oh. the fuck are you talking about? I'm sick right now. Yeah, get away from us. We don't need to catch whatever you got okay, going thanks. on there. Okay, thanks. All right, William. <laughs> uh, another fun set. Always innovative. Always interesting. Uh, so, yep. Uh, I just, it's a very B average set. That was the great. <laughs> Let it soak. Guy Fieri. <laughs> Let it soak. <laughs> William, over here. Uh, so realistically, why couldn't you make it to La Jolla yesterday? It's two hours south of here. If, I, if I'm literally going to be frank with you right now, I made the drive to the new Cracker Barrel. It's probably an hour's drive. It was an, uh, another hour's long wait. It was another hour's long drive back. At one point in time, I was thinking I was having a heart attack. I had a real hard night the evening before. I was on stimulants. I was drinking butt ice. Uh, I almost had to pull over my Ford Taurus. I literally thought I was having a heart attack. It turned out my pec muscle was uh, just stimulated, if you want to call it that. It was, it was twitching. It wasn't my actual heart. Right. Yeah. I fucking love this story. <laughs> 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 Having a, a false alarm heart attack on the way back from Cracker Barrel is the most American song I can think of. Oh, that's a Brooks and Dunn hit right there. Let's give it up for Mama's Pancake Breakfast. All right. Well, William, you did it again. Very fun. Right, Always different. First time we've seen the beekeeper outfit. There goes William Montgomery, everybody. There he goes. Tony. Yes. I was saying, like, I, after he said I have the coronavirus, and he turned and looked at all of us, <laughs> like that killed me because he's just he, like he's looking in our eyes, like you're getting it next. Yeah. But I realized, no, he just can't see shit. Right. That's why he's looking around. Yeah, he likes to awkwardly look the guests directly in the eyes after jokes. Sometimes it is one of the stranger things it made that me he laugh. does. It scares people. Pull another name out of the bucket. You guys having fun out there? Yeah. All right. Make some noise for your next comedian. I believe this name is Robert Lamble, perhaps Hamble or Gamble. Robert Famble. Robert Ramble. It's a weird first letter on that last name. Robert something. Hamble. Robert Hamble. No? All right, on to the next one. How about Yuri? Is Yuri here? Yuri, Y-U-R-I. Someone yelling in that room? Yuri? Y-U-R-I? All right. How about Omar? One word, Omar. Omar? Whoa, look at this. Here he is from the audience. Make some noise for Omar, everybody. How am I out of breath from walking from right there? Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, fuck, I already forgot. Um, so uh, what's up with the new generation trying to make us pay for all their college? You know, I didn't go to college for a reason. I went to trade school. I don't want to pay for your fucking uh, little bar arts degree. It's not my fault you can't make money with your, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that goes. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I don't know where that goes. Uh, what else? Uh, healthcare, too. I mean, we're the fattest country in the world, and you want me to pay for that, too? Come on. No? Okay. Uh, oh, uh, I don't think it's cool that uh, women could put no short dudes on their dating site, on their dating profile we can't put, uh, put no fat bitches. <laughs> I can't control that I'm short, but you can control what you put in your fucking mouth. You know what I mean? Omar. Welcome, Omar. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. How's it going, man? You came out of the audience. Yeah. First time doing stand-up? Uh, third time. Oh, third time. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah it was rough. 
Yeah. Uh, have you ever been on this show? Yeah. I thought I yeah. remembered uh, you. you. You said my wife looks like uh, Melissa Villasenor. Oh, that's true. Is she yeah. here? Can we get her up here there for a she second? Is. I want to. I want to finally show exactly what yeah. this looks like. It is shocking. In the history of doppelgangers, I have never seen a doppelganger doppelgang quite as well, her hard. Voice as this is like woman it too. looks exactly. She disagrees. Yes, with you me. do. That's exactly what Melissa Villasenor looks like from Saturday Night Live. Everybody, <laughs> look out there. Look at those people. She has more stage Melissa. presence. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. We love Melissa. There she goes. Thank All you, right. Baby. She's very shy. Can you do impressions of anyone? Oh, really? Well, that sounds like one no, boring-ass impression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's when you do faces like that that you really look like her, too. The smile, not so much, but it's incredible. Yeah, like that. That's, that's what she does. Do you so know crazy. that? That is weird, man. I think that might be Melissa Villasenor doing an impression of a regular lady. <laughs> I've seen you guys quite a few times. Do you come every week or? No, uh, whenever we can. We got to time this out. We got to figure out a way to have Melissa Villasenor as a guest on an episode when you're, is that your wife? Yeah. Awesome. How long have you guys been married for? Uh, almost five months. Wow. Almost six. Whoa. Six. Oh, 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 seven shit. months. Damn. She said. Dude, I. I think you should stop going said. on dating sites. Yeah. You've been married for months. I know. <laughs> wow. It's always disappointing. You're no in big dudes. trouble now. Do you ever, do you ever uh, look at your wife and say, put down the fork, you're going to turn into a fat bitch. Whoa, Jesus, Gordon yes. Ramsay. Yes. You guys are both Latino? Uh, well, she, she's a mutt. She, uh, no, she's Latino. No, uh, no, she, she looks exactly like a girl with the last name Via Senor. So... <laughs> She, she drives a white Civic for she, sure. She's, uh, she's not a mud as much as she is a Chihuahua. Um, <laughs> well, no, she has a she has a little bit of a Native American, a little bit of Jewish. Yeah, so uh, does Elizabeth Warren. Sure, yeah. uh, <laughs> we've heard this before. No, I think she might be more than Elizabeth, though. But she might be more than Elizabeth. She might be. Yeah, I think everybody in the room might be. Yeah, <laughs> you look like a Chicano yeah. leprechaun. Thank so. You. Uh, Thank you. And, but you are Mexican. Yes. All the way. Have yes. you, you guys have kids yet? No. Very good. Thank you, Emeril. Thank Jesus you. Christ. Yeah. Racist. How do you keep from having kids? You've been having unprotected sex with her for what you say five, but is clearly seven, at least seven uh, years. Well, no, she, she was on birth control for a while. Oh, okay. Well, there you yeah. go. That's a lot of information. I wasn't yeah. really expecting that. Not really. I like how you just threw your joke right off. No, nope. I love yeah. it. Exactly. Uh, so uh, how much birth control does a Mexican girl have to take? Like, does she have to... Does she have to snort lines of it, or is it like is it like an IV drip? She just sleeps with it, with well, it on like chemotherapy. Turkey baster. Do you have to try to come over her cervical wall? <laughs> <laughs> we, we are really good at climbing walls. So, uh, well, n no, I mean she's not full Mexican. If she was full Mexican, we would have like eight kids by now. So. Right, right. I can't believe she has you convinced that she's not full Mexican. That's absolutely hilarious. What do you think? You still think he might be an immigration agent after all this time? Still a chance, playing it safe. It is so weird. Like when you do that stuff, how much you look that to see that? <laughs> Jeremiah, am I fucking crazy, Gordon Ramsay? Is that the most is that is It's it absolutely dead on. It's it's terrifying me right now, actually. It is frightening. No one looks as much like a person in my life as much as you look like Melissa Bias. We've all, we've all worked with her for over a decade here. So we know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> it's Listen to that. crazy. Anyway, Wait, Omar. But to, but to Melissa, fair, are you doing an impression of yourself? <laughs> that's honest. honest I, I swear to God, the first time that I saw her in the audience, she was sitting right over there. I remember it because I I spent 20 or 30 minutes glancing over there. I even was signaling while other people were performing and things to Jeremiah. I go, what the fuck is she doing there? <laughs> yeah, well, Melissa, I, what are you, I, some kind of spy? I swear to God, I thought she was perhaps here with maybe she was like on a date with a guy that wanted to try stand-up, but she wanted to lay low, so I didn't want to put Melissa on the spot. So I was like ignoring it the entire time, but I'm literally like, that is so fucking crazy that Melissa would just sit there and not say hi or let us get her a booth or like be in the back or something like that. But you're still literally not her. <laughs> you guys will all see eventually. I'm sure the internet's hating this right now, but one episode we'll have Melissa on coming up soon and uh, we have to make sure that you're here for it. Can Where I do you guys on? live? Can what, I go part, on too? what part of uh, Chula Vista do you live in? <laughs> Uh, we, we live in a city named uh, Bell Gardens. Oh, uh, Bell Gardens is downy. one of the Mexican towns that doesn't yeah. have a Mexican name. Yeah, pretty much. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, garden is still pretty Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> it's shocking to me that you're not the guy that's been up here with an orange in your pocket tonight. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> That's I fair. guess you got to say something racist, right? He sold them all. That's Thank you. I, yeah. <laughs> However, he does have a roast available. It's called a naranja. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Omar, what do you do for work? Construction. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else would I do? <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps uh, landscaping or something oh, like actually, that. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. second base for a major league baseball team. Or, uh, no, I, I tried. Yeah, I used to play baseball. Really? What position? Shortstop, pitcher. Yeah. Yep, yeah. that's it. That's yeah. it. That is it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Not that good, though, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you do for fun now? What are, what are some hobbies uh, and things like that? I mean, whenever she's at work, just smoke some pot. Wow. Uh, watch Kill Tony. That's right. Write shit down. Try to be, yeah, try to write jokes. I really liked your uh, last joke. That's very true. That you know, like Thank about you. the weight <laughs> and and the short. You know, yeah. that's kind of fucked up. And now with this kind of you know atmosphere that we have nowadays, I see that coming. It's going to be like against the law yeah. to say that. We yeah, can't very, fat shame any day to now. say to say what to say uh, no can, short guys. Yeah, you we know, can't fat like shame them, but they can short shame yeah. us. So. Well, yeah, I, I liked I liked your first one too because that's like a <laughs> that's a major thing a lot of people are feeling like you know like myself I'm like. Yeah, I, you know, I have no problem helping the helping these kids, but it's like you're working a job. Yeah, and like I, my only advice on, on that one is like get specific. You know what I mean? Liberal arts or fuck, I don't know what you do in college. Shit, like you kind of just trailed off. Yeah, have yeah. a thing. You know, pick like the the dumbest class. I went to college, and so much of it, I was like, none of this is that useful, man. Yeah. And so like. Get specific on that because I, I think that'll hit a fucking huge nerve. Oh, Maybe honestly. he was Thank forgetting you. words on purpose and doing like a Joe Biden style of stand up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say this this seems to be a running theme tonight that, is, that I sort of like it's a running theme because it is so critically important in stand up comedy is that initial hello, that initial thing. You came up and you said that you're out of breath, which while being honest and sharing how you feel is a good thing. Uh, guns a blazing right from the tippity top. It shows weakness. It shows like a lack of excitement about what you have to talk about. Oh, I'm out of breath, man. Just such a short distance. But it's like you know, it's really you. W- you want to get right into your purpose and what you want to talk about. Everyone would have believed your college tuition thing a lot more, and we would have been in- engaged more if you would have just come out with that right out of the uh, right out of the get. Yeah, because that certainly makes you angry, right? Yeah. The idea. So like, yeah, and, and also you got them. up here and you're like, oh, I forgot. Shit. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's honest. I think yeah. honesty in comedy is the most important thing. But then share, since you forgot what your first bit is, just share something like super real, like, ah, oh, my dick itches. Like, just to get them on your side. Yeah. That's okay. just so people are just like, he's not lying. Matt, does your dick itch right now? Yeah. <laughs> Chef yeah, Gordon about Ramsay. It. So, what they're trying to say is quit cooking on low heat, turn it to high, and get to the bloody minute. That's right. Absolutely. Thank you. People okay. that say, I'm out of breath, I wasn't expecting this, how did this happen, didn't think this was going to happen, can't believe this happened, it's all bullshit. Get to your shit in yeah. any way you can, but that's I know. your I really was out of breath, though. It no, was, I believe you. Sad. But I believe no, yeah. you. Who gives a flying <laughs> fuck if you can't breathe or not? Get to your jokes! <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, very serious So man. true, Gordon. Put your hands together for Omar, everybody. (laughs) There he goes. And Omar's lovely wife, too. Give her a hand. Still think it's Melissa Via Senor, by the way. It really does. Well, to be fair, they do all look similar. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus, Paula Dean. You know you're racist when you think all Latino women look the same. I think she's just drunk. She means all Melissa's. (laughs) All right. How many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? All right. Who gives a fuck? Pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for your next comedian, Darren Hone. Hone? We have some bad handwriting on this episode. Darren Hone. Here he comes. A serious man. Here we go. Make some noise for Darren Hone, everybody. I'm going to be real with you guys. Had a rough year last year, so I had to give up PCP for Lent. Um, 
It's more of a tactical choice than anything else. They started having these uh, Vietnam flashbacks that didn't belong to me. Um, it's your general Vietnam stuff. Everything's in black and white. Narrated by Winona Ryder. Um, kept holding my fallen brothers in my arms as they took their dying breaths. But everybody keeps calling me Doug Stevenson. So Doug Stevenson, if you're in here, um, please retrieve your flashbacks back. It's been a long road, probably for both of us. Um, anyone ever get so high that they try to change the song with their turn signal? <laughs> Darren Hone. Welcome to the show, Darren. First time on, right? I was on last year. Oh, okay. What happened last year? You said that like it was a traumatic experience. Uh, I think I did okay, but uh, I told you guys my living experience, and you guys kept talking shit. Like what? What was the living experience? We want to talk shit again. I lived in Alhambra with like six roommates or something. Alhambra. With I, li I moved out of that place since then. You lived in a huge house with a bunch of people, and you were paying like seven hundred. Yes. Oh, remember. yeah, you were paying too much money. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. We, we deal with people all the time here that sleep in their cars and things like that. We never have any problem with them. But we have a problem when someone's paying way too much money an hour outside of the city in a shitty living situation. Yeah. Would you say that you getting your balls busted on this show helped you realize exactly how horrible your living situation was? I mean, it probably took, like half a year after you guys gave me all that shit for me to move out. Yeah, that's about right. That's about how long Are it takes Are you happy to... that you did? No. Oh. <laughs> Why? What's different now? What's your living situation now? I live with like a horribly, profoundly lonely roommate now who yeah. always wants to hang out. And I want to hang out for like max 15 minutes and then go to sleep. Right. Oh, fuck. Is he here? No, he's God, watching from not. home right now. What was that, Chef? He's watching from home right now. Very sad that you just said that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, wow, you just have one roommate. You have your own bedroom? Yeah. Sounds way better, dude. Just say, sorry, I can't hang out. That's yeah. all you have to do. There you go. Some good it's... life advice from Red Band there. You have your own bathroom? No, it's a shared you bathroom. share a bathroom. It, it, how He's does that... always in there uh... when we're not hanging out. Well, did you have more better bathroom access when you were in the house in Alhambra with six people? Absolutely not. It was much worse. It was worse. So now you're, at least your bathroom life's a little bit better. Yeah, but also there was like a weird... He put like a weird symbol on the mirror that looks like witchcraft. In the bathroom? Know. Oh, boy. Yeah, he didn't is, mention this witchcraft. This is getting really frightening. Well, I think, you, I think you should put something in that bathroom, and I think that it is a hello tushy. Yeah. Uh, it sprays your ass with fresh water. It's the same water they use to brush your teeth. Right. D wouldn't you want to use the same water that Red Band uses to brush his teeth yes. on your asshole? And I'm right getting now, sick over here. You go to hellotushy.com slash kill Tony and get 10% off your order. It's only $79. Can you believe that? What do you do for work? Uh, I do art department for like commercials and stuff. Oh, that's cool. That's great. It's. Was that you, Emerald? Oh, uh, yeah. I just do art department for commercials. Oh. You just mocking this? Yeah, guy? what the fuck? That seems like a good job. Yeah, I just well, I did that before one time. I got a roommate. He's lonely. Em Emerald, you don't like the way this guy talks? This guy talks real weird. I don't get it. And he's a little more bam in his voice. I didn't even really notice that. Is that true? Do you talk weird? I don't know. Do I talk weird? <laughs> I guess he does. I don't know. Do I talk weird? I don't know. Well, I don't think he really jackets. talks weird. I'm not, I'm yeah, not yeah, sure like whether or not jackets. I talk weird That's or not. Awesome. Awesome. Like All right, very good, guys. Really loves I don't know what's happening. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Very good. No, you're not done. Get back on the mic, you bloody heard, donkey. I... All right, Darren. So what else? When you're not hanging out with your roommate and things like that, what do you like to do to get away? What? Tell us something about your real self. I camp and... Uh... You cam? 
camp. He says okay. he camps. In a right? way, I, I try to make sketches with my friends uh, every now and then. Wow, you do talk weird. Of dead bodies? Oh. Yeah, you sound like Kip Dynamite a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Don't be sorry, dude. Why are you sorry? I've got this orange it's jacket. I thought me. it would do stuff for me, but... Yeah, how long have you been the assistant? Is that God? Where is that come? Yeah, I'm your God. Dude, <laughs> this, Jesus. Um, this is the voice inside your head, dude. Um... <laughs> Actually, none of us have actually been saying anything the entire time. Uh-huh. So, so quit looking around at uh, other people. They're not doing you. You're actually f- freaking out right now about yeah. your lonely roommate who's at your apartment, probably watching the stream, and he's definitely going to kill you when he gets home now. Go Broncos. Dude, it's dead air. It's been quiet, totally silent for the last five minutes. Bro, you, you, you gotta say something, man. Bro, you've been having a Where stroke going for right the now? last three right? minutes, dude. I'm freaking no, out right now, dude. Keep and people are asking if you're okay. giving you all this so time. What do you want? Man? Something's These happening inside your good body. For the stage. I don't I don't know know what? I'm sorry to call you out. I'm the nice one. I'm the nice one here. Okay. Okay. You guys literally just wait until I call off the dogs. Go Broncos. Darren, say something. Darren, you never had six roommates. It was the voices in your head the entire time. This is like an M. Night Shyamalan Holy movie fuck. right M. now. M. Night Shyamalan yeah. roommate movie. He's actually the uh, assistant coach for the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, <laughs> and now you believe that you're a comedian because one of the voices convinced you. All right, Darren. Uh, this fun is times. why I stopped doing PCP. No, you have to start again. Dude, PCP is actually sounding pretty good right now. Oh, do it, dude. I figure if I smoke a little PCP. Why are you looking around? Say something. Dude, I think PCP, PCP is actually going to help my All right, all right. right. There he goes. Darren Hone, everybody. Darren Hone. <laughs> Fuck yeah. We have another regular on this show, ladies and gentlemen. He is notoriously a great joke writer. Uh, he is famous for his roasting capabilities, of course. That is on episodes in which Donnell Rawlings is not here. Um, <laughs> no, I just worked with this guy the entire weekend in La Jolla. He opened up for me, and it was incredible to watch him put it all together and get to watch him do real comedy sets in front of a real audience on the road, and this guy fucking destroyed. Make some noise with a brand new minute, the great David Lucas, everybody. <laughs> Here he is. Come on. It's David Lucas, everyone. Yeah, what's up, bro? Uh, does anybody use Waze? Yeah. yeah. I feel like uh, Waze is better than Google Maps. Uh, Waze have you doing some stupid-ass shit to save time and traffic. Like, the other day, Waze told me to go through a Chick-fil-A drive through <laughs> So I can save seven minutes on my route. <laughs> they were like, go through the drive through get a number one, no pickles. Well done on the fries. And the freeway will be clear by the time you get your lemonade. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> but Waze does seem like it was an app designed by black people because that shit lets you know where the police are at. Police, 1,200 feet ahead. Thank you, Tyrone. (laughs) There you go, David Lucas. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome. Two more uh, white people I don't know who the fuck they are. Oh, my goodness. You're just starting guns (laughs) a-blazing. Not even going to let me tell you you had a good set or anything like that? I know who she is, bro. She's the uh, wife from Married with Children. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's a legend. Hell yeah. What's up, dog? Good to see you, man. What's fun up, times man? this weekend. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Lots of fun. Yep. This guy cooking up fish on the regular. Hell yeah. In the actual kitchen. Yep. Stinking up the whole fucking condo with that shit. I seen Tony in biker shorts. Those were not biker shorts. We talked about this last night. <laughs> David. 
David on uh, last night's episode mentioned that he saw me wearing biker shorts around the condo. What, a- what that actually was is David saw me for one moment walking into the living room in my underwear. He got confused because he's never seen anyone be able to wear actual briefs before. <laughs> he got confused and thought I was wearing biker shorts because he has to wear fat man boxers. <laughs> You was looking yeah. like uh, Lance Armstrong from the waist down. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm surprised you know that uh, bicycle reference. Hell yeah, uh, didn't bro. Realize that nigga you... wore a Tour de France and then, didn't he have like AIDS or cancer? You did the Tour de French fries, didn't you? <laughs> 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 Looks like you're wearing a bicycle hoodie. Who said that? Hey, that was, uh, I believe oh, that Chroma was. Chris? <laughs> Chroma Chris? Is that Guy Fieri? Yeah, it's Guy Fieri. Oh, thank you. What's up, bro? Your food suck. <laughs> <laughs> So welcome. Uh, what's up with the pins on the hoodie? You know that's going to affect the paramedics when they try to bring you back to life with those shocker paddles, <laughs> right? You want me to wear one? I got one of yours at the crib on a uh, jean jacket. Heck yeah. Every time I wear it, I get hit on by gay niggas. Oh. oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's what happens. That's why I wear mine every chance I get so that, so that gay... Uh, so that gay Niggas can uh, hit on me. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Paula Dean, try it. Try pointing Hell at no. him. See if he All says right. it. Uh, for my wedding, I'd like to hire a bunch of... Niggas. <laughs> 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 oh, this is amazing. <laughs> I love this. Brum, 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 brum. Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> Tom Green finally had something to say. Uh, Tom Should Green. We, Jay, Tom what's, Green. Yeah, what's your real name? Matt Bronger. Oh, okay. Okay. No, but yeah. Yeah, what? I look like him. <laughs> what the fuck? He talking about, yeah. I what look you, like him. <laughs> do you say nigga during karaoke? Like, what? I do. No. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm so white, I say buddy in rap songs. Bri- Brian, <laughs> what'd you say? Brian Zigger? What's, Who's that? What's, what'd you say your name? I don't was? know who that white person is. These fucking weird white names, man. I. <laughs> What should I begin, buddy? Man, it's a David's one. having PTSD Longer, from last yeah. week. <laughs> 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 it was uh, very controversial. It's, it was interesting for me to see. Uh, I read some things on the, uh, on the Instagram of people being mad at uh, Donnell for not letting you get a word in. I think these people are sort of stubborn and didn't see it. It's the, all what, good, man. I take it as a sign of respect. Of course. Yeah. So do I. And I think so does everybody that really gets comedy. It was absolutely a sign of respect that he put all that together for you in preparation yeah. for you. You could always make jokes about Donnell, and of course you will in the future yeah. every time you see him. But, uh, <laughs> Hell yeah, but, when I get uh, on It was funny that people literally got mad. Like, he didn't even let David Lucas get a word in. Like, it's like, yeah, you fucking idiot. That's art. You know, but <laughs> that nigga did do the fake fight. glove touch. What's like, that? Like the fake glove touch and fighting, the uppercut a nigga. Uh-huh. Like... No, like I don't looking like we about to be buddies, and then fuck it, man. I love, God, it. man. I love it. You're absolutely killing it. You're like Chris Rock if he was literally bigger and blacker. <laughs> Chris Boulder. <laughs> You're like Deontay Wilder if he just kept putting on more and more layers of suits to weigh himself <laughs> down. <laughs> you look good. I got to know how many oranges you have, though. <laughs> how many oranges it's you packing? Reference. It's a reference from earlier. I can tell he's getting oh. furious okay, right now. Look. <laughs> D- oh, David like, gets this she... special look in his eyes that you guys yeah, don't was... get to see when someone makes fun of him. It just <laughs> just blinks and it turns red for a second yeah, like he's I, short-circuited. I was like, God damn, uh, <laughs> she looked like she caught a pound on black dogs. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> she caused a pound on black dogs. Oh, oh my I goodness. love animals. Mm. I can tell you probably got a house full of cats. <laughs> <laughs> just one down here, baby. Whoa. Oh, the wet spot. Shit. My Freaky goodness. ass redhead. I don't think David likes cats. However, he does eat meow mix every once in a while. <laughs> Tony <laughs> he's never it. had a piece of ginger in his life. Hey, Joe, you look like the hamburger helper glove, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Shut your... <laughs> Shut your <laughs> he does look like the hamburger <laughs> helper. He also looks like the Pringles guy. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't bro. fucking get any of these references, but uh, it's Pat. You look like you cook for Lady and the Tramp. Like, what? You know the movie Lady and the Tramp? You look like the nigga that brought him a meatball out there. Yeah. <laughs> you look like fucking Baby and the Stamp. I don't. Oh shit! Okay, what the fuck? Okay. All right. <laughs> no. oh, oh, Bam! 
Bam. Yeah. No. He doesn't get at... those lights when he hits the drums. <laughs> he gets those lights when the crowd goes crazy. No, dude. Danny, you keep doing it. <laughs> no, that doesn't help. Don't listen to Tony. <laughs> yeah. Only listen to me. How about a big hand for the great Danny Lucas up there? <laughs> Silent but deadly up there. Controlling the brand new, extremely fancy lighting system that the comedy store has That's now. That's my white he, uncle. You can see right down all your shirts, too, ladies. It's great. (laughs) There you go. Red Band keeping it super creepy and (laughs) semi-hilarious. However, the dude lights do add 10 pounds to David Lucas somehow. It's been one week. You need to go fall asleep in a tanning bed, nigga. What the fuck is that supposed to be? You mad because I can get in a tanning bed? I mean, is that what it is? You you try to close it and it's just like a George Foreman grill halfway uh, over. <laughs> oh shit, you Tony! Be you be careful, dude. Tony, you got a Groupon for booty bleaching. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Your method is so silly. I love it. It works. <laughs> It's like UFC fights. Stylistically, you're interesting. You have these short, little, silly worded bangers, but. Uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> like, Groupon for booty bleach. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean? That's just funny, but it doesn't make sense. Like, why, would I, I, supposed to, why would I use Groupon? Of all the things to use Groupon for, I would not use a Groupon for booty bleaching. I would go to a professional, like yeah. I do on the regular. You know what I mean? You just sit on a deal, though, with bleach on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> a dildo called right. the professional. Roast yeah. his ass. I don't roast the guest, David. Man, he got a fucking nighttime shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Help me out. You know when old men go to sleep, they put on the suit. Oh, a nightgown. Yeah. Nighttime shirt. Get your, get your cool. handkerchief shirt wearing <laughs> ass up out of here. Yeah. You can't be roasted, Tony. That's my nigga. Okay. What, what do you got? What are you rocking underneath the hoodie tonight? You got that thing zipped NASA shirt all pins. the way up. My oh, pins. a NASA shirt. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I've never seen a black hole wear a NASA shirt before. That is interesting. <laughs> my God. Look at that. Tony know how to do the downward dog on a private jet. <laughs> I actually, it's funny you mention that. I have, uh, I have done that. I've been on a private jet when I did the oddball comedy tour. Oddball is also how people describe your shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, Tony gives me the dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, yes, absolutely. Um, well, David, you did it again. Yeah, Perfect buddy. fucking brand new minute, f- hot off the presses, and then you yeah. come in, and uh, we have a bunch of fun making Hell fun yeah. of each other and everybody. There he goes, the great David Lucas, everybody. <laughs> yep, he's David Lucas, funny on social media. Very fun times. Great performances this weekend in La Jolla. Let's get back to this bucket, shall we? Fuck yeah. Oh, that's the great Aphrodite I see out there. We got speech impediment man Steve Lee kill Tony royalty out there. Some fancy, fancy people. We got Thomas, right? Thomas? What's your name? Hat and glasses? Yep. Brandon? Brent. Put your hands together for Brent, everybody. Brett. Brett? Very good. All right, you can laugh at me all you want, but you should project and enunciate, you piece of shit. I was trying to give you a compliment. Put it, give him a hand. He drove Michael Lair down to uh, La Jolla last night. Michael Lair, spoiler alert for those of you watching live who haven't gotten to see the La Jolla episodes yet, Michael Lair absolutely fucking laid it down in La Jolla. Multiple standing ovations. Not from himself, obviously, but uh, from the audience. Pull out another name out. Make some noise for your next comedian. Another one-word name. Make some noise for Manolo. Manolo is next on Kill Tony, live from the Comedy Store. Manolo is making his way to the stage. Here he comes. Don't forget, Ventura, Thursday, Tacoma, Miami, Boston, and Austin coming up. Kill Tony live. Here he is. Manolo, everybody. Yo. So I just recently found out that an uncle of mine is half Chinese. Yeah. And then, be honest with you, I'm a little bit worried. 
So I don't know if you guys think I could catch the coronavirus off of him besides the chlamydia. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Do you just hate it when girls want to hug after sex? I mean, the room's so stuffy and they're all sweaty and they're looking at you and hugging you so tight, not letting you go. It's like, damn girl, relax. I will not leave without pain. <laughs> like yesterday, I had a hot date, right? And I wanted to make an impression. So I took four Viagras, you know, four Viagras, right? And we went at it all night, right? All night. We did it seven times. Boy, my butthole sure does hurt. <laughs> yeah. I got charged $15 for a... Uh, huh? Manolo. Manolo, welcome back. Were you Manolo, you. were you on last week? Was that when that was? Yes. Two weeks in a row for you, you Two lucky weeks. fuck. Yes. And uh, we found out that you masturbate for a living. Drop that, drop that. You what? I, I dropped that. You dropped that. Yeah. What do you mean you dropped he that? He switched professions. <laughs> that was last Monday. No longer a content creator, a chatter baiter content creator no longer. Why is that? Because um, I committed the mistake of showing the video to friends. Uh huh. And I got the bad eye, the stink eye, and I didn't like it that much. So now I'm a painter. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, there you go. Very good. So Who wouldn't know that's not a there. respectable job, you idiot? So now you're a professional painter? Not a house painter, which would, would appear. But like an uh, artist. Body paint. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. You're an artist. And uh, you make <laughs> any money from that? No, not really. But Did you just start this week? <laughs> no, no, I've been painting all my life, but I decided to put it up. And so what you're really saying is you're still a cam guy, but too many people saw that episode of Kill Tony, and now you're too hiding. Too many of my friends, yeah. yeah. My right. two friends saw it. Oh, you let them see that, and they didn't know. So now you're just saying that you're a painter, but you're jerking off for money for sure. Yes. Okay, very good. All right, there <laughs> we go. That's, that's the more honest, uh, enjoyable answer. This guy gets paid. To jerk off. People pay to watch some guys Useful. masturbate. This is one of the guys that masturbates. Clearly, I don't think... Wow, a lot of people yeah. excited about that. All these guys, oh, <laughs> just clearly a bunch of masturbators uh, clapping their hands like, fuck, I've been doing that for free Might as forever. well get paid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Manolo, are you, are you painting with jizz? <laughs> yeah, just this part. Let's okay. check in with the sh great <laughs> chef, Gordon Ramsay. All those guys in the audience just clapping just realized you can go pro with that? Yeah. We have the XFL version of masturbators out here. Uh, sad that they're not making the big bucks. Remind us, how much money do you get paid for uh, blowing? The, the most I got was for painting a canvas. There you I go. Sure, yeah, for masturbating had, uh, on a video. The most I got was seven hundred in a week. That's oh, pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh -huh. I used to do it at night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at night, anybody that cams in the morning is a psychopath. Yeah, you go see a show at night. Everyone knows that. Yeah. That's when I go see a guy I jack off. I do mornings. So yeah. what about Don't your life? Don't look at me like that. What about your life is interesting? Because I, I feel like we talked talk. with you clearly. We got uh, obsessed with the fact that you masturbate for a living last week. I guess week I'll start doing it again. Maybe six I'll or seven minutes right? during the interview last week. So I'll, I'm going to ask you this week, what's something else interesting about your life, about you, other than the fact that you masturbate on camera for and a I, living? I paint. Sure. That, I asked you what's interesting about you. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm also a musician. Really? What kind of music do you play? Uh, electro. Electro? Yeah. I'm a composer. Yeah, a composer. You yeah. play any instruments? Yeah. Like what? Like the guitar. Oh, you do? Do you sing at all? I'll fucking yeah, I kill do. this guy. Would you be dude. willing to... Uh, <laughs> but I don't sing well. Oh, what is that, a bass? It's a bass, but I mean, it looks more like a composer. You know what I mean? Ha, <laughs> ha, Hey, Chroma Chris. <laughs> composer. That's because oh, you yeah, jerk oh, off. Yeah, oh, yeah. So uh, you play guitar, that's it? <laughs> play guitar, and I compose music. You compose music. Who does the music that you compose? Uh, Mexican artists. Uh, Mexican artists. Like what? Like what, what kind of? Like mariachi or something? Uh, no, but I, I, I can do mariachi. But no, like pop Mexican artists. Can you grab that guitar off of there? Away from the speaker? Yeah. We're going to bring out the anywhere, guitar? Really. Is that what we're going to do? Carry it around anywhere. <laughs> Absolutely away from there. Away from the amp. All right, everything's fucked. It's okay. It's all right. But it got set off from that. Oh, okay. All right, so it must be something else. Take a step forward. There you go. 
I'm gonna go unplugged. It started when the bass guitar went there. Okay, you, beautiful. You, you, there we you, go. You. Three hopes this time. Everybody, clap your hands. There you go. All right. So here's the part where we find out how uh, how bad all of your art actually sucks, Manolo. We're gonna have you play a song on guitar for us while masturbating. Yes, absolutely. Come on, I want the whole show. We want you to we want you to play that seventh string if you know what I'm talking about. Um, there you go. Put the fucking guitar on, Manolo. There you go. There he is. He doesn't even need a pick. Absolutely. He's got those professional masturbator hands. Doesn't need them. What do you think? This, what do you think? This guy's a fucking jerk off? Come on. Get over here. Here he is. Play something good. Don't suck. be set free But I'm a parasite Creep and crawl I step into the night Adopt it when it's ten feet on the head Grab the reef underneath my bed Underneath my bed But ain't got no quarrels with God Wow Ain't got no time to get over Lord knows I'm awake Won't somebody get me off of this Wow, that was incredible. My goodness. Yeah, now masturbate. Wow, Manolo, you just made every woman in her 40s squirt right now. It was incredible. Milf's, Milf's my thing. Sublime, huh? Yes, sir. That's very good. Why aren't you doing comedy at all? <laughs> so this fool, I'm a big fan. Of me? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm the reason why you started? Yes, Fuck, I got to quit doing this shit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Manolo, what else? Do you have any kids or a girlfriend or anything like that? Two abortions. Whoa, okay. God damn. What, Joke. your set in that Joke. song you just played? <laughs> uh, no girlfriend? No. You go on dates? Yeah. What's that like? How do you find dates? Uh, Mexican chicks. Where? Dates. How do you find the Mexican chicks? Go out. Where do you go out? Fucking clubbing, taco shop. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Taco shop. Wow. I, I Mexican thought... chicks, I'm telling you. My God. Mexican chicks. What about them? What do, what do you like about They're Mexican cool. chicks over uh, typical other women? Uh, Come on, tell the they truth. They speak Spanish, and, uh, and I, I roll better with Spanish. <laughs> They're spicy. You, it's interesting because you're Mexican as fuck, but you have like the boring aspects of a white dude. You have like white. You have like white brain a little bit. You have a lot of white. You were raised around white friends or something like that. What part of Chula Vista are you from? I, I live there. I, I'm from Tijuana, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. Look at that. From uh, from uh. Oh well, I was gonna say something stupid. No, say something stupid. Okay, you have, you haven't stopped doing that since you got up it. here. Just keep going. Don't break the momentum now. I'm from a really um, hard ghetto. Yeah. Like a really yeah, you're ghetto. from Tijuana. We get yeah, it. Yeah, but but, uh, but uh, no, a really, really hard ghetto. Yeah, absolutely. I went with my girlfriend there to visit my grandmother like uh, mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and there was a shootout. Uh-huh. So oh, we bent over, right? And yeah. she got fucked. Wow, you're right. That was That's stupid as so fuck. Uh, all right, there he goes, Manolo, everybody. His second week in a row the on the show. The He's the Manolo on Instagram. Man- the Manolo on Instagram. Interesting stuff. That guy, two weeks in a row. I'm telling you. This bucket. So many pieces of paper in here, yet some people get lucky. Make some noise for Ben Rudy, everyone. Ben Rudy. Wow, big pop from the Lucky corner side. Crowd goes wild over there. Hey, here he comes. One more time for Ben Rudy, everybody. Hey, thank you. Uh, you guys want to know the hardest part about being tall? My uh, drug tolerance. 
through the roof, man. Ever since I was a little kid, I could always eat more Flintstone vitamins than my buddies, drink more Robitussin, you know. I was a go-getter from a young age. But now I've smoked so much weed, like my weed tolerance is crazy high, especially with edibles. I have to eat at least like 100 milligrams to feel something. And now the state of California made a law where the dispensaries only come in like 10 milligram increments because white girls can't handle their shit, you know? <laughs> Ruin the party for everybody. But I have to, like, if I want to eat 100 milligrams, I have to eat 10 fucking cookies. I'm going to get diabetes before I get high, man. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Prejudice against tall people. Uh, I don't like dispensaries anymore, you know? I can't deal with people calling shit flour. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> ben Rudy. Welcome. Welcome to the show. You're one of the funniest power forwards we've ever had. Uh, I feel like a point show. guard now. Really? <laughs> I'm 6'5". Is that... You'd That's be a small. point guard now? That's In the small. NBA? Yeah. All right. I wish. You're being pretty specific there. I can pass there. the ball. Absolutely. And I'm encouraging. <laughs> I like that. Very good, Ben. Sure. Wow, you talk a lot during the interview part. I haven't even asked you anything yet. Uh, so welcome to the show. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, it'll be two years in May. Two years. All of it here in Los Angeles? Uh, I live up in Ventura County. I caught you guys when you came to the Hong Kong Inn last time. Oh, sweet. Yeah, we're going to be there on Thursday. Still well, some tickets available for the season. second added uh, sold-out show. But not the Hong Kong Inn. That's closed, right? Uh, it's still open, yeah, no, but we're, it's we're, practically closed. It's we're at a place called the Winery. Have you ever been there? It's this giant new uh, vineyard or something like that. You know about this? I'm not that kind of fancy person. Go to vineyards. I'm wow. from Oklahoma. We don't do that shit. <laughs> oh, okay. You're originally from Oklahoma. And then what made you move to Ventura? Uh, I had friends out there. Okay. What do you do for work? I work at a storage facility. Whoa, a storage, storage facility. Look at this. A Pretty little fancy. William Montgomery uh, action going on here. It's a big business, you know. You guys could be like Jay and Silent Blob of the uh, <laughs> fucking storage facility units. Is it as boring as we all think it is? Yeah, they just sit there. You ever see anything crazy in any one storage unit? Uh, a lot of junk. <laughs> it's not as exciting as that show. Like most. Of I stuff was just gonna say that place actually shoots a lot around, uh, you know, just north of here. here. They ever come up to uh, where you are? No, we do all our shit online. It's mainly like just a bunch of poor people buying other people's garbage. <laughs> oh. That's what storage units are. It's other people's fucking garbage that they don't want in their house. Right. No, we know. We know. <laughs> we know how storage units work. Because if they wanted it in the house, it would be in the house. And if they had a bunch of money, they would just have a bigger house to put the I, shit in. So we know that it's poor people, it poor way. people that don't want the shit in their house. Before you auction it off, do you guys take a look and go, "Well, let's take the Heisman Trophy out, you know, in the BMX bike." Yeah, because that's yeah. what people first put come, in first storage come, units. Yeah, their Heisman first fucking trophy. One hundred percent. I've OJ seen that a bunch. A, OJ has a unit up there. Right. Right. All right. Well, then, what else? What do you do for fun? You seem like a good-looking guy. How old are you? 27. 27. You're six foot five. White dude. Living the dream. What's the catch? What's going on here? How many STDs do you have, Ben? Tell the truth right now. Uh, just genital warts. Wow. Very good. Look at that. Why no hesitation HPV, whatsoever. Come on. Okay. Uh, what do you like to do for fun when you're not doing stand up or working uh, at a storage unit? I do like playing basketball. Yeah. Uh huh. What else? Uh, bowling. Pretty really? Good. You're a tall bowler. Yeah. That's rare. Oh, wow. Did you hear that, white girl? Someone wants to go bowling with you. Yeah. yeah. I know where you could stick your three fingers into my holes. Whoa, look at that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's, I'm sorry. Someone wants was... you to get in her gutter. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, or... I'll let you know where you can store your junk. Hell, yeah. That's a wide lane. <laughs> bowling jokes. How big She'll is rent you some shoes. <laughs> Wait. <I don't> <laughs> <know>. <laughs> You're not going to strike out on this one. Hey. Oh, Balls. All right. My okay. grandma's a big fan. Even despite the racism, she stuck with you. So I just wanted to say that. She sounds like a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Tony, I absolutely hate this guy. Why do you hate him, Joel? Why do you hate him? I can't tell what it is. He looks like the fucking McDonald's moon guy. <laughs> Mac tonight. He's tall, mediocre, white guy. He's hot, so I guess he gets away with you a lot of bullshit. Matt, right, from SNL. <laughs> Mac tonight. Yeah. You hate a lot of people, Joel. I'm noticing that a lot of people Let's come up here you just hate. Yeah. 
Is it because I'm white? That's part of it. It's because you're tall and white. I'm sorry. What's your dick like? I'll show you after. Whoa. Show me now, dude. Whoa, yeah. I want to see if you... Pull it out, dude. I'll show you mine. You go first, and I'll pull mine out. Okay. Why don't you guys guys do a thing where you go behind the curtain and show each other your dicks? There he goes, everybody. Going behind the curtain now, Ben Rudy. Joel's... (laughs) Joel's going to show you his dick. That was a quality ass. Did you guys catch that? I don't think the health inspectors would dig that. <laughs> what the hey, fuck are you, a narc? <laughs> yeah. Chefs. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Would it help if I went back there, too, and helped you? Hey, I like that. Chrissy could be a referee Teamwork. on this. That's like the third comment, right? Lord, let me tell you something. Her. I know for a fact Joel will pull out his dick in a heartbeat. Um, he likes dick. His, his dick is basically the shape of this bucket. It's fucking... <laughs> Thick and uh, powerful. But Ben seems to be... I don't think you expected Joel to call your bluff on this one. Big things come in small packages, Tony. All right, well... Ah, fuck. (laughs) Well, at least I always have that. All right, back to you in the studio. Well, it's always awkward when a segment ends when I'm trying to get a guy to show my buddy his dick and uh, (laughs) he refuses to do it. But uh, I can't think of any other way out of this interview. Ben, any other crazy fun facts about you that we need to know about? About your life, maybe life in Oklahoma, your friends or something like that, or your parents. What do your parents do for work? Uh, my dad does nothing, uh-huh. but my mom's a teacher. Oh, how, do you, how does your dad survive off of doing nothing, off your mom's teaching salary? Which isn't much. Wow. Right. So what is your, how, why? Why does your dad do nothing? Uh, he's uh, like kind of mediocre at everything. <laughs> But Jesus not really good at fucking anything. Christ, dude. Oh, runs in the family. Like what? Yeah. what is he mediocre at? I don't understand what you're saying. It's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> Did he have an accident in his life or something? Brain trauma or something like that? Or well, he, he was the accident. I was accident? You were the accident? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jesus. Guy Fieri <laughs> says I was the accident. <laughs> All right, Ben Rudy. Well trying to figure out stuff about you. Are you showing Joel your dick or not? That's no, what sounds like everybody's yeah, let's mind. Let's dicks, dude. Let's do it, dude. Uh, wait, is, wait, no, don't do it now. Don't do it now. You'd have to go back there and do it. We can't have it. We're on YouTube. That's we, why I faced them. We can't have dicks on YouTube live for some reason. Unless, I, of course, you're... I need uh, the 10 pounds from the camera. <laughs> there you go. All right, there he goes. Ben Rudy, everybody. <laughs> Ben Rudy. Tall guy with a tiny dick. There he goes, everybody. You call my name? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, rebuild the momentum in this room right now. Uh, your next comedian is the third regular on this show. He's coming off standing ovations in La Jolla. He's unbelievable. Of course, he has uh, over 20 years of comedic training at Second City and a few years ago was diagnosed with ALS and switched over a few months ago to stand-up comedy and it turns out using his improvisational Second City black belt timing is a monster fucking comedian and every single week he writes and performs a brand new minute on this show. He's undeniably everyone's uh, favorite. Everybody loves him. Make some noise for the one, the only, the powerful Michael Lehrer, everyone. I love being in a wheelchair because it put me at a sideline with a woman's ass. I spend all day talking to lady butts. They don't mind. They see my suffering. They know it's community service. If you have ALS, they have a long closet if you can't afford um, things like a wheelchair or equipment, which means I sit on a dead man's squatty body. <laughs> My hero is Magic Johnson. He beat Ellis, so can I. worst part about not being able to walk 
is now on my sneakers are just heavy socks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you keep that spotlight on him, Danny? Uh, wow. Michael. What the fuck is happening with the lights? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Everything's good. We got you covered. Whoa, a little breath spray. Is that Lysol? Oh, my goodness. Banaka. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. That's so much. I just special order it. <laughs> Why? Is there, isn't every order of yours a special order? Yeah. It is. Special delivery, <laughs> meals on wheels. <laughs> hey, yeah. who wanted those human resources for Kill Tony? Uh, well, I, that, I think that actually pretty much falls on me. I have a complaint. Go right ahead. I'd like to file a complaint against David Lucas. <laughs> oh, shit. Go right ahead. What's your complaint? I... First off, he probably roasts me in the shadows. He calls me Wheels and Speedy. And then on his podcast, he makes me sound more retarded than I am. And he implies that because I speak slower, I don't have to do as many jokes. And I will fuck with any of you. Alright? Wow. So, let's go, dog boy. I'll be a huckleberry. Well, fuck it. We ain't doing this in the shadows. We're doing it in front of 100,000 people live. And we're doing it in front of all your... You want to talk shit? Let's go, motherfucker! Well, I will respond to that right now. Uh, As the head of human resources at Kill Tony, uh, I will say that first of all, uh, when it comes to every it being in the shadows, everything David Lucas does is in the shadows. Uh, Massive giant dark shadows. I'll cross that one off my list of burns for him. Okay, very good. And when it comes to you being his huckleberry, I must warn you, he eats every berry that he sees. Uh, He's got a real sweet tooth. Like Steve Jobs, he's gonna get cancer with his pancreatitis. (laughs) There you go. That's a a low blow, literally and metaphorically. Um... But as the head of human resources, I will uh, I will respond by saying that you know this is a case, David. Or this is a case, Michael, of him being jealous of you, and the reason why he's jealous, I think we all know, is because you don't have to walk. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It angers him walking. Yeah, it hurts his ankles. I know. Yeah, it's so ironic. I can't walk, and then someone who can is so much fatter than me. Yeah. No. It's really weird. How do you wrap your head around that exactly. one? Exactly. My question is, how does David Lucas wrap his belt around that? You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, my Tony, we're all family. Yeah. But I brought this attention to human resources because uh-huh. I won't be played. I won't be disrespected. Goddamn right. People try me all the time. Yeah. I ain't the one. I'm out in these streets. Yep. Um, Hopefully on the sidewalk. Hopefully on the sidewalk. My name. Yes, absolutely, Michael. I agree 100%. I will not allow you to be disrespected. Uh, You are my little baby gorilla, one would say. Uh, I absolutely love you. You are my favorite human being. It absolutely blew my mind that uh, you made it down to La Jolla while. You know, being having obviously being restricted and uh, having old Brandon here uh, help us all out. I know your name's Brett. I'm fucking up your name on purpose now because you got so look. Offended. You know what makes me even more of a hero? It took me 14 hours to get the lore in my chair. <laughs> it's true. He took La um, Cienega the entire way to San Diego. Uh, regional joke. Yeah. 
It is only a for part of the audience. Right, only for the Southern California people. It worked both episodes yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. I love it, Michael. You had fun. You had your first California burrito. Fuck last night. yeah, man. I man. don't care about food. Right. Um, I like weed and pussy and beer. That's right. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So fuck a burrito. <laughs> well, you you, you you literally could fuck a burrito if you wanted to. Yeah, I am, man. Times get tough. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what else is going on in life? Anything else crazy we need to know about before moving um, on? Just blowing up and enjoying the ride. You're goddamn fucking yeah, right you are. No doubt, Absolutely. Man. Yeah, and it, and it's gonna check be- um, people um, michaellaircomedy.com you'll see a link to my merch. It's been so incredible to see people wearing my shit and pictures. It helps me out a lot. I love you all so much. Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. I encourage everyone that loves this show and Michael Lair yes. to go to that website, get some merch. Support Michael Lair, man, so he has, uh, can buy some more beer, right? Yeah, they're a little pricey here. Yeah, <laughs> no shit. Yeah, well, you tend to uh, drink a bit. Um, enjoying the ride is right, Michael Lair, and uh, it's going to be a long ride, so keep that battery charged on that wheelchair. No doubt. And I think they're sold out, but it's pretty definite I'll be in Ventura. Oh, I love it. Coming yeah. to Ventura. How's that for a little announcement? The Always been. Did I say it wrong? No, it's great. You're absolutely right. All right. Two shows, Thursday night. Catch Michael Lair there. All right, cool. There he goes, Michael Lair. Stay up here, Michael. We're going to uh, we're going to pull another name out of the bucket. You guys like that? You want to go to the bucket one more time before finishing up here? Did we have a girl up here on stage tonight? Other than Melissa Villasenor and Chrissy Mayer? All right, and the great Jetski Johnson. Okay, well then uh, let's find names until we get a lady up here, shall we? Oh. There's one. That'll work. Put your hands together for Sarah Fatimi, everybody. Sarah Fatimi. Sarah here? Sarah Fatimi. Here she comes. One more time for your final comedian of the night, Sarah Fatimi. Hi guys, how are you? Thank you. Whew. I'm back in the States. I was recently in the Middle East a couple months ago. Okay, no woos there, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I for once understand what it's like to be a non-Muslim on an airplane. Um, as soon as we were taking off, the guy starts reading from the Quran, like in a deep ass voice, like, I was like, I don't like how you say that while we're taxiing. And then suddenly he was like, in a few hours, we will be serving brunch. I was like, oh, brunch, thank God. Oh, but um, yeah, I was, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I was actually in Iran, where we were almost uh, in the middle of some shit going down. And thank God nothing happened, because, I mean, they had a lot of beautiful cultural sites. And like, what would we do without McDonald's, you know? Okie dokie, Sarah Fatimi. Are you hot? Keep the microphone. Don't put that in there. How's it going, Sarah? I'm good. How, How long have you been on stand-up comedy for? Four years. Four fucking years. Jesus fucking Christ, Sarah. What's going on? What's happening? Has anyone ever told you you did a good job at anything before? Has anyone ever been like, good set, Sarah, and then not followed up by, so you want to fuck? You think I'm mean? Let's check in with Chef Gordon Ramsay. This is the first time I've ever said this. Get back in the kitchen! (laughs) 
Sarah, we love you. We're just kidding, Sarah. Chrissy Mayer, I'm gonna check in with you. You know what? How hard it is to be a lady. Yeah. What do you? What did you think of this? I think Sarah, it's not too late to become a suicide bomber. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Bronger's the nicest guy I know. He's notoriously one of the few nice guys, nice guests in the history of this show. That's why it's going to be exciting right now when I check in with Matt Bronger. A hush falls over the crowd. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to uh, beat up someone who just took 75 punches from themselves. But, look, you jumped on stage and you immediately started talking like uh, an annoying person on a date. And I feel like, just like, look, I mean, we all were kind of like, oh, you look nothing like your picture. But comedically. No, I'm, I'm, I'm being constructive here. I honestly think, like, just, you're, you're worrying yourself off the stage, like, as soon as you jumped up. And just, you know, when you said Iran, everyone was like, um, fucking coronavirus is there. Lean into that. You know what I mean? Or, or, or just try to, I would say push more buttons. You're pushing your own, push theirs. That's I it. wasn't, because I wasn't there when coronavirus was there. I was there when the almost World War. No more excuses. And that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Take it easy. Sarah, uh, so how many times a week do you like perform? What are we talking about here? Three to four. Three to four. I know, I know. This was like brand new material, and I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. No, it's up. okay. Don't ever fucking apologize. Right. Don't do that. Don't that's, do that. That's Just not be true. like, yeah, I took a shit. Eat it. You know what I mean? Yep. Honestly, right. honestly, don't, no one wants to hear the apology. Don't ever do that, because cause fuck that. Okay. Fuck them all. We're all going to die someday. <laughs> Apologies. Get up on this stage. Even if you take a dump, just say, look at my dump. It is my dump. There are other dumps, but this one is mine. Right. I'm quoting the Marines. Excuses, apologies, none of it works in this art form. I mean, you have to be hard on you and only you, and the fact that it's a brand new minute has nothing to do with, you know, whether it went well or not. You know, it's you chose. How long has it been since you've been on this show? We've had you on here before. Yeah, um, May 2018. So like May 2018. So almost two years. So really, you could have done any minute that you've written since May of 2018, and you chose with your brain a minute that you wrote. When? When did you write that? On the plane back from Iran two months ago. You wrote that on a. Pl that's the that's the most dangerous thing anyone's ever an Iranian's ever done on an airplane before was write that material. I mean, my goodness, why not just jump in the cockpit and finish the job? You know what I mean? Really, it's incredible. Iranians should not write on an airplane. That, that is the most dangerous thing you could do. My God. Why, we should have united 93, that flight that you were on when you were in there writing. All right. Everyone feels bad for what you. If, now, what so. if she did another minute? Who knows? Yeah, you want to do another minute? Yeah. Literally. Jeremiah famous yeah. for bad suggestions. Very bad uh, idea. I don't know why that would be a good idea. It's actually not a bad suggestion. She has an endearing quality about her, and people are rooting for her to succeed. That uh, You actually thought that the whole room was going to go crazy there, but you have two of her friends in the corner that clap for that because yeah, you not thought. Necessarily. Oh. I like it. Bam! <laughs> there you go. Wow, Joel likes somebody. Yeah. All right, well... Uh, uh, interesting idea. However, Sarah, we're going to move on from this. We're going to pull one more name out of the bucket and uh, make it a quick one. There goes Sarah Fatimi, everybody. It's good. This is good. This is good for Sarah. Sometimes a bad appearance or a bad set or a bad show is exactly what it takes for someone to fucking get their shit together. So how about a hand for Sarah Fatimi? Either having a breakthrough... That is what breakthroughs are made out of. Right there. Either that or she's going to quit. Either way, it's a win-win. You know what I mean? All right. Let's get one more comedian up here. All right. Another lady. This could be good. Make some noise for Wendy Wilkins, everybody. Here we go. Wendy Wilkins. Please be here, Wendy. Fuck. I don't see movement. Wendy Wilkins? Wendy Wilkins? Fuck. Yeah, that's what sucks about when I say it's the last hey, guys. comedian of the night. Guys. Hey, man. Hello. Very good, yes. That's your main job. 
You didn't want to keep drawing and, ki- and then. You no, know. it's a little bit too loud though. No Can't one can hear, hear talk. Any what anybody's saying when you're blowing a fucking saxophone that big into a goddamn microphone. We're all in good shape right now, yes, ladies chef. and gentlemen. The bucket of destiny has spoken, and it just so oh. happens that we have pulled out a legend on this show. One that absolutely kills every single time he's on stage. He got taken to Skankfest before because of a performance. He's beaten William Montgomery in a joke off before. It's you. You could start making your way up here. Make some noise for the great and powerful Steve Lee, everybody. Steve Lee, everyone. Come on, everyone. Make some noise. Your final comedian of the night. This is it. The real deal. Steve Lee. (laughs) One more time for Steve Lee, everybody. Steve, you're 40 seconds into your set right now. Can you please start talking? He wiped down the mic with a fucking... All right, go ahead. Steve Lee. Uh, So one time after a show, someone gave me a rape whistle. (laughs) Really fucked up my mind. I was so scared for the week. I start having nightmare like someone's going to rape me in a dark alley. And I call my, my, my female friend. She was like... Oh my God, like this is what women think about all the time. Like now you know how a woman's feel. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I know how a woman's feel now. Like my breast is so small. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have a boob job. <laughs> Need to work on my game, finding a rich man. <laughs> I need to give really a lot of blowjob <laughs> so people will like me. <laughs> All right, that's my one minute. Oh, there okay, go. there you go. We restarted the clock for you. Once you started talking, you got to 53 seconds there. Took you a little bit longer than you expected to wipe down the microphone, <laughs> huh? You almost forgot you were completely disabled there for a second, huh? Did you see, like, Montgomery came out with that suit? Like, it's shit, like. With what you have going on, dude, I don't think coronavirus would be that bad for you. Uh, yeah, fuck this cowtism motherfucker. Yo, what are you doing? There only can be one. There only can be one. Like Highlander. Like Highlander, Steve. There can only be one. This is true. That I I heard can them. You, uh, can you translate that? What, what no, you, you heard you heard exactly what he said. Cripple fight. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's a real cripple fight chant that started there. These open micers want to see fucking. Blood. You have real soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. My goodness gracious, this place is in chaos right now. It's I don't appreciate being disrespected like this. Yeah, he's clearly trying to take your spot, and of course I'm talking about your parking yeah, spot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which is really what this is all about, isn't it? We found yes! Out, we found out a couple weeks ago this is the guy that's been taking your spot. Yeah, he obviously is all right. <laughs> At least I can do stand-up comedy. Oh. oh! World star! Where's, where's David hey. Deary, Brandon, someone get on fucking camera number two, please. Is that what you call it? <laughs> oh, shit. Michael Lair had a lot of time. Whoa! He's been faking it the whole time. 
Michael Lair just stood up. This is incredible. <laughs> I really He's love He's going to die this earlier guy. with that. Oh. Wait, I'll wait to say you fucking. <laughs> yes, get some what light on What did you that. say? He, s he said that you're going to die sooner, but I don't know if that's true because he actually drives his car. Uh. <laughs> you're going to... You're gonna kill yourself because you never get fucked. Oh, shit. That might be true. And by the looks of things, I don't even think Steve Lee can masturbate properly. He's got those, he's got those inside out hands going on. <laughs> this is incredible. We have never had, this is the first time we've ever had a cripple fight on the history of Kill Tony. We're almost, June's going to be seven. Let's talk about ramps, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about incline levels. What? Fuck yeah. So, uh, Steve Lee, how do you feel about, uh, about what's happening? Yes, the band can play that song. Very good, Steve Lee. What do you mind? About what's happening here. How do you feel that Michael Lair is jumping in? He's got a microphone right now. What is this? What do you what do you what, what is this? I mean he's gonna run over my foot after the show and I'm gonna <laughs> be dead, so I'm not gonna roast him anymore. Well how do we settle this? Should you guys have like a, a thumb war or something like that? <laughs> or uh, perhaps uh, how about I perhaps how about I just push you in and then we go from there. Perhaps you guys could have a simple, friendly competition of paper, paper, rocks. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I can only do paper, so <laughs> I'm loose. I'm gonna lose. I think you guys should start a gang and call it the Crips. <laughs> yeah. Woo wee. There will be blood. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, Steve Lee, you just had a set. We're having fun up here. How's life been going for you? Good? Uh, good, yeah. Trying to uh, make short films now. I'm getting into making movies, producing. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Wow. You're following in the footsteps of uh, the guy that made Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Being a South Korean, making films, right? Yeah, yeah. You're South Korean, correct? No. Oh, you're not? <laughs> oh. What, what are you again? By the way, like... Chinese? Kinda, yeah, Chinese. Chinese. Oh, so, wow. okay, my Chinese, Vietnamese uh, a landlord told me not to get too close to Chinese people. Ah. Like, it's fucking racist. It's not racist. Uh, look at the newspapers, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, actually, I was like, yeah, that's right. They're like <laughs> Right. No, I agree. So what have you been doing to uh, prevent uh, being near Chinese people? I you bring this stuff all, everywhere. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like... You carry wet ones around with you. <laughs> That's your big plan. And, okay, here's the thing. Like, Asian people are, like, cleaner, okay, because we don't... Cleaner than who? <laughs> Wait, what the we, fuck are you talking about? We put our shoes outside, you know? Yeah. yeah. So rats can shit in them all night. All right, red band, relax over here. His girlfriend is Asian. Like, he should know. But. Yeah, she never wipes her ass. It's been two weeks since my girlfriend's wiped okay, her ass. Okay, Brian, Brian. Thanks to Tishy. Michael's okay. shoes don't even touch the ground. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, that was mean. Oh, oh. Asians you. put their shoes outside. What else? What else is there about Asians that are cleaner <laughs> than any other race? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All the best, all the best Chinese restaurants I go to have a C rating, so yeah, I don't know that, what the fuck you're true. talking that's about. Why do you that's think for that's Chinese. True? That's not. Oh, that's that's just yeah, that's it's for a, Chinese. It's a mistake a lot of people make. <laughs> Uh, Steve Lee, what do you think is the most Asian thing about you? What's something in your everyday life in which uh, is super Asian? Like you have uh, you have one of those like kitties that waves at you or something like that in your house? Or I have like a Buddha thing in my car. Oh, in your the, car? The mirror, you know, in the mirror. In the mirror. Well, I think the, you the might the need rear, to uncover mirror, that mirror. mirror. Oh, it's hanging from the yeah, mirror. Yeah, hanging. Oh, from all right. A Buddha thing. And also, I download movies. <laughs> oh, you download? You That's illegally download agent. movies? Yeah. Wow! Look at you, a filmmaker that illegally downloads <laughs> movies. What an asshole! Have you ever thought that that's maybe the karma coming back at you, and that's why you were stricken with, uh, <laughs> what is this? What do you have again? Cerebral palsy? Uh, no. Uh, ar armaplasia. Armaplasia? Yeah. 
It's like the joint bo uh, born. Armaplasia, I believe that's David Lucas's sister's name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Steve Lee, unbelievable as always. Another great new minute. So much fun watching yeah. you and Michael Lair have a little. Uh, Good game. Have a little face off there. There you go. Oh shit, look at this. The world's most awkward fist bump, everybody. Steve Lee and Michael Lair. Connecting knuckles there. All right. This is the uh, one of the most dangerous parts of the show, Steve Lee getting off the stage. Hey, look at the drawing from Ryan J. E. Belt, everyone. That's what he did while you all sat there doing nothing. Hey, unbelievable. Make some noise. Her first time on the show, everybody. Make some noise for Chrissy Mayer, everyone. First time guest. Jumping into the insanity that is Kill Tony. Make sure you catch her on the wet spot on Compound Media. She's on tour right now. ChrissyMayer.com for tickets. at C-H-R-I-S-S-I-E-M-A-Y-R. Catch her March 20th, White Plains Comedy Club in New York. How about another hand for Matt Bronger, everybody? <laughs> Brand new album, Please Hold Me, available everywhere. He's got it, the podcast, This Might Help. Coming back in a few weeks from a little hiatus, This Might Help is his podcast. But check out his brand new album, Please Hold Me, available everywhere. Guys, we did it. How about Chef Gordon Ramsay, the great Jeremiah Watkins, everybody? <laughs> you can catch him headlining the Huntington Beach Rec Room March 14th, I believe that's this Saturday, with Joel Berg and the great William Montgomery opening up for him. Tempe Improv, March 19th to the 20th. Sunnyvale's Rooster Tea Feathers, April 9th to the 11th. And the Sacramento Punchline, April 16th to the 18th. What else, Jeremiah? Yes, Huntington Beach this, this Saturday. Uh, YouTube.com slash Jeremiah Watkins. Got a page that uh, is super fun there. And Jeremiah, stand up on social media. Thank you. There you go. Catch him in Huntington Beach. How about a big hand for Paula Dean, the great Jet Ski Johnson, everybody? <laughs> She's on social media, Jet Ski Johnson. Always a blast. What else, Jesse? Uh, Friday after we're in Ventura, I'm going to be in Ventura again, featuring Ferran Taylor. So if you're in the area, awesome. Yeah. Two nights in Ventura. She's also going to be with us in Tacoma. Washington for two Kill Tonys and Boston for two Kill Tonys, <laughs> filling in for the great headliner Jeremiah Watkins, who's going to be on the road. How about a big hand for the great Chroma Chris, everybody? <laughs> this guy ha is sponsored by some of the greatest musical companies in the world Ernie Ball Strings, Orange Amplifiers, and GNL Guitars. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. We love you, Chroma. Thanks for being down in La Jolla last night. He was Absolutely. on fire last night, Loya. What do you think about tonight's episode? Oh, it left me a little hungry for more. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. And, it. guys, the backbone of the band. How about Joelberg Joel Jimenez on the ones and twos? <laughs> He's mostly sorry on social media. Anything else, Joel? Nope. Love you guys. Peace. I catch him on all the road dates coming up with us. Very exciting stuff. And, uh, yeah, Ventura this Thursday, Tacoma, Skankfest South, Miami, Miami Stand-Up Show, Boston Stand-Up Show, Boston Kill Tony, and Moon Towers Official that Wednesday and that Thursday. And I do believe we're, we might even have some pretty cool guests for that one as well, uh, for those ones in Austin, Texas. Uh, shout out to Caveman Coffee, Speedweed, Vito's Pizza. Go to RyanJEBelt.com. Get some prints. Go to MichaelLairComedy.com and buy some merch. And uh, go to HelloTushy.com slash KillTony and get yourself a little fucking bidet. S -s -s Clean your fucking ass, Kill Tony fans. Hey, guys, if you, uh, you guys in the audience, if tomorrow, if you want to come... Uh, Brody Stevens, we're having a celebration for Brody Stevens. Me and Tony are both on the show. It's true. It's at 10.30 here in the mel uh, main room. There's some tickets available. Come hang out with us and let us uh, celebrate. I'll be Brody. in that, too. That's oh, you rock, are? Oh, man. great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, why not come to the Brody thing? You guys were a sad audience tonight. Why not come and uh, you'll fit in perfectly at the Brody Memorial tomorrow. At least you can rationalize being a half-energized audience. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow night, the Brody Stevens Memorial. We love you guys. Thanks for coming out. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> next week, next week with uh, the Sklar Brothers, some of our favorite guests. The week after that, Tom Green. 
And yes. two weeks after that, Big Jay Okerson and Shane Gillis. Good night, everybody. <laughs>